Jesus. Just clap your hands as she comes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Are you awake? Are you awake? Are you awake? Because I have a message from God for you. And this word is going to go beyond the lift up Jesus. But what is important is that it starts here. So let me hear you again. Kabale. Respond back by saying Kabale. 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 I don't hear you. Kabale. I don't hear you. Kabale. 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 Amen. Right now, you are declaring a new seed, a future in this land. The seed is from God. No matter how long you have lived here from generation to generation, but get ready because more are coming to join you in the city. Did I say city? Did I say city? Kabale, the city. City of God. Amen. Yesterday, I had the privilege and honor to be ordained. As a this is a work of God of 10 years in the making. And Pastor Jim earlier asked, was there a time where you want to throw your towel? And now let's me. Not that uh, it's not only difficult serving God. But regardless of circumstances, the joy of the Lord surpasses the circumstances. And so I almost threw the towel many times. But I caught it back. And thus yesterday. What yesterday means for me personally and geographically and spiritually is beyond our imagination. We can simply rejoice for the fact that it was an ordination, an event. But God is willing to explain to us that it is beyond our desire, but it is God's desire to fulfill a promise. In 2004, I received a word from a prophet. And she said, God will use you to influence the financial system in this nation. And when I heard that word, I wasn't quite sure if I'm supposed to be happy or nervous. But it was a mix of feelings. Because I was excited that such word would be given to me, a person like me. Uh, but at the same time, there was, there was nervousness. There was doubt. I don't have the training. I don't have the network. 
I don't have the money. How in the world am I going to affect the financial system? Of the United States of America. And I walked away from that meeting knowing that God has a plan and I just need to respond. But what echoed in my spirit is that everything is changing. Everything is changing. Amen. Everybody say this with me. Everything is changing. The moment that you receive a word from a prophet, God makes sure that the words of the prophet never fall to the ground. And so say this with me again. Everything is changing. And I did not have it in my plans to become a pastor either. But in 2012, I was ordained as a pastor. And fast forward 10 years. In 2022, I was ordained as a prophet by the same man of God. So I have to question, Bishop, are you talking to God? That wasn't my plan either. Either. But in the morning as I am preparing for the ordination, I experience this power of God, this presence of God that is overcoming me. And he gives me a scripture and he, he tells me what you are doing this moment is found in the word of God. I'm not talking about the ordination yet. I'm looking at the dress that was prepared for me beautifully laid on my bed and the necklace that was presented to me and I saw myself prepared and the Lord says to me Isaiah 61.10 as a bride adorns herself with her jewels but by all means, I am married. So I remember being a young bride. Because in modern wedding, brides don't like prepare themselves. They don't do the makeup. They don't do the dress. They don't do the dress. They show up and they are made. But I saw myself, not only in the natural, but in the spirit. How carefully I was preparing myself for this incredible ordination. And God speaks to me, you are mine. And the entire world is waiting for you to arrive. First Kings 120 says that the eyes of the Lord, of eyes of all Israel, are on you. And I have to question God. Because this particular account is not of an ordination account either. But it is about. David, the king, who has a plan to give out a succession to his son Solomon. And he speaks to David to affirm his plan for succession. So David to Solomon, God, Am I being ordained as a king? Or ordained as a prophet? And the Lord reminded me again. My word does not fall to the ground. 
About 20 years ago, when this word was spoken to me, that I shall affect the financial systems. Two years later, a word is given to me that God is going to do mighty things. And God is going to equip me to do many things that I could not imagine. So, when? In the presence of God, as I am praying for what this really word really means for me, God speaks to me in a very powerful way. Ask me one question. And the question was again very scriptural. That when Solomon in, in Solomon's dream, after he sacrifices thousand cows, that the Lord appears in his dream and asks him, what is it that you desire? The same question was asked of me two years after the first prophetic word was given to me. And quickly I responded, that all the I desire is to serve you in your great kingdom. But I need one thing. And that is wisdom from above. Everything is changing. When you respond to God correctly, everything starts changing. And so I continue reading the first king. back to this prophet that anoints the king. And so I, I know that what God is intending to do is revealed to me that I am not an ordinary prophet in a traditional means. But when he has spoken to me clearly, said the will of God has its order and has a course. It does not happen overnight. There will be many days and many years to throw that towel and give up. But when you receive a word like this, that you are going to be ordained as a priest, and you will be ordained as a, as a prophet, and in the meantime, I will equip you as a king. And the, thus the word given 20 years ago is manifesting. What well, we need to decide to understand today, and I know Bishop Kisa is so excited, the lift of Jesus ministries will be in the center of transformation in this region. But I just made a mistake. Because it's not about this region. It's not about Uganda. Uganda yonka. It's not about this East Africa region. East Africa yonka. But God is doing something new. Something revelational. Through the people of righteousness. And this time. He's not just intending to raise a priest. Ordaining, ordaining pastors. Or ordaining prophets. But he is breeding a new type of office of the prophet. And it's an office of the prophet that discerns the wealth transfer. But it's not from man to man. God is opening up heavens. And he's targeting Kabale. And he's doing new things that you did not fathom. 
And though we have complained over and over, we need jobs. We need more money. We need wholeness. God, we just need you. The first part of the priesthood, that's settled. I don't see there's any problem that Jesus is real and his death was worth it for us. It's absolutely worth it and necessary. But the second part, the prophetic, that part is somewhat subtle too. Because you believe. And the more that you believe, and the more that you have confirmation from the word, it shall come to pass. But the third part, kingship. The, pe the priest. First is the priest. Second is the prophetic. And third is the king. Why is this quote kingship or royalty? Why is it so it's so difficult for for us to understand? Because our faith if it's not accompanied by experience, sometimes it feels like imagination. Something that I just thought of, and it, only if this could happen to me. You just, you're professing with your words and believing in the word, but it's not a reality. God is breaking your paradigm today. Because the reason for kingship. It's not about self-wealth or increasing wealth personally. Only. That's just part of it. But God is revealing to us these seven through seven days. It's one of the main reasons that he wants to build up and equip Prophets and priests and kings. It's so that he can send them to the seven mountains of society. So no longer are you a pastor of a church only. No longer are you a prophet within the church only. But you are a prophet. You are a king sent to a very specific mountain. Do you believe? Because some of you are thinking, I am right over here. But you want, to, you want me to jump over the stage? And the answer is, yes, but not by your effort. You see, the children of the world are said to be wiser than the children of the light. You know why? They recognize something about you. They see that once you get this, their plans are destroyed. Their business will crumble. And everything that they have built over their lifetime cannot compete with the effort of God. So what they have done over the years and years and thousands of years, they work hard. They work hard to sustain their status. And how could you not be aware of this? 
And just like how Paul, when he was walking the streets of Damascus, in a way, we have been walking in such way. But this is a moment where your scales must fall off. And your eyes open, not in the natural. But your eyes open in the spirit to see that you are fear by the children of the world. You are feared by children of the darkness. But only if you knew what kind of authority, what kind of power, what kind of identity you have in Christ. You see, each mountain that we're talking about is considered to be authority, rulership, some kind of principalities, dominion, palace, amani, whatever you want to call it that is much bigger than yourself. And it's true. If you just continue walking the way that you have walked as a believer, nothing is going to change. Now we come together next year. I hope I don't hear you praying the same prayer. My husband left me. Bring him back. I had, don't have money to feed food for my children. And if you're praying this on a regular basis, just know that this is a moment of breakthrough for you. And this is also a, a wake-up call for the church leaders. For if we were to work with God and strategize with God to subdue the seven mountains of society, and influence these fears that what we call seven mountains of society. Uh, yes, we agree. It's through our faith. But if we don't recognize the seven mountains consist of all of our workplaces, that in our mind we need transformation to view the work of our hands differently. You are not working so hard just to sustain yourself. You are training for the next. No matter how unfair your employers may seem to you, no matter how much loss you're experiencing through your small business, God is training you. God is equipping you. And God is allowing you to see that if you overcome that tiny mountain, the big mountain is not an issue. So we have work to do. As a church, we need to strategize to see the work of people's hands is a training place for the greater work of God in our society. God's plan is to establish his government on here on earth. And guess what? It's through your life. His kingdom, his government, 
is manifested through your personal lives. And so the assignment goes back to the church. And church leaders, pastors, please lift up your hands. I know I want to see where you are. You are so responsible for this mandate. And God wants to equip the house, equip the people, and position saints in a place of influence and power. And so they can sit at the table of authority and decision making. So everything that we're complaining about our society, everything that you're complaining, even in your own house, because there's no, because there's no good social system, we have an opportunity to turn that around. We have responsibilities to place people, to place the saints, to place the righteous people on the top of each mountain. But I'm not asking you to go to law school. I'm not asking you to go an additional degree. However, you do need training. First in the spirit. And you do need to go to school. So stop complaining. But we don't have the right education system. You do. You just heard the wrong voice. Saying that it's not good enough, so it's better not to do it. So we're, we have a strategy in partnership with God. And as church leaders and pastors, our goal should be facilitating the purpose of our people in the kingdom of God. And as the people get equipped to learn to love and to serve one another, your basic foundation gets set. And God will give you a word. God will give you a word through your word of God. We start taking the seven mountains more seriously. Because we realize without people of God, the seven mountains mandate cannot be accomplished. And then you look to God. God, are you sure I'm part of your plan? I don't have what it takes. And just like how I started out. I don't have the money. I don't have the education. I don't even speak eloquently. Gosh, I get nervous when I have to speak in front of people. And then I want to run away. Are you sure it's me? And God is saying yes. I'm never mistaken. And so God allows you to revisit the vision and the dreams of a child. Because God knows that you've walked a long way to be here today. And not necessarily just to get to the conference. But let me just say that it's a miracle that you're breathing today. Because during the two years of pandemic, we lost our loved one. 
times. People fell left and right. But God wasn't done with you. So if you are harboring on that complaint, you need to quickly zip up and understand what God is trying to convey to you. That you are part of a bigger mandate. You are part of a bigger plan. That you are not going to affect Kabale only. But it's going to influence the continent of Africa. And you will be such a testimony to the rest of the world. Because they will adopt the model. And just like how I took my seat yesterday, you must choose to take your seat. Everybody say this with me. I take my seat. I take my seat. And remember, we don't know what that entails. Because God, God's going to stretch you and ask you to do some crazy things you have the same response. Oh God, not again because I have no idea. But the Lord is so reassuring. Isaiah 61, he's reminding us whatever state that you're in, whatever circumstances that you are surviving, you're believing spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Amen. Spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. Everybody put your hand on your head. It's it's easier. Easier. You sense the presence, presence of God so strong right now. Spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me. And we're going to read this together. Spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. I can't hear you. To the proclaim the good news to the poor. He, he to bind up the broken to proclaim the freedom for the captives, the release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God. Amen. Your life, your life mission is to fulfill God's purpose and destiny. Uh, you've heard of this very many times already. But this is not a vague statement. Right now, whoever's sitting in this tent and whoever's listening on social media and who will ever listen in the future he's talking to you that your life mission is to fulfill God's purpose and destiny in the seven mountains of the society and so what we know, the work of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, shed for me, it still takes a form, it still takes a manifestation in this 21st century. And just as how many times that you've read Isaiah 61, it should really take a new meaning inside of you right now. Because he's not saying he is anointing you just to minister in the house of God. He's anointing you so that you can minister to the seven mountains of society which shapes the culture and the systems of this world. And that's why when we read throughout verse 1 through 3, when you proclaim liberty, you are not vaguely proclaiming liberty to those who you think are 
bound in the prison. You're talking to the legal system. You're talking to the prison system. You're talking to a lot of different areas that you can see that it was not thought of over one night. The goal is to have not only fame, influence, power, and money, and all that comes with that, but it's to remember these are needed in order to do the work of God. But not only do the work of God, because the results if you're having mediocre results, just know that you are misrepresenting the kingdom of God. And so the type of results that you are seeking as a believer is creating transcending results. And not just for a time period, but for a generation after generation and know that you are at that very beginning of what is to come. So the Lord gave me a word for this, this new city of Kabale. A city that is prosperous practicing social justice righteous and peaceful government if you have your Bible Psalm, Psalm 72 this is a prophecy of the prosperity and the perpetuity of the kingdom of God guess where Kabale? No? It's too good to be true. God is starting it right now. It takes a very stronger meaning for Kabale. The full accomplishment of what he desires to do in this soil right now takes all of us to work together to bring the socioeconomic and political and faith agenda of God. This particular Psalm 72 is a heartfelt desire of King David when he was proceeding with the succession. His son Solomon. And it's in very many verses. So I summarized it for you. First is not the economic prosperity. But first is social justice. When social justice takes its form, there comes an order in the society where we start seeing that it's a good soil to now start planting seeds of prosperity for economics to grow. And then you start seeing that business and government has to work together. And perhaps up to this point, and I don't know if it happens in Uganda, but the Bible talks about oppressors who practices corruption, it says that they shall be reckoned with. And so that is not made by the hands of the people, but it's by the hand of God that the righteous political practice will be in place. Can you imagine where a mayor, mayor is loved and honored by its people. 
And he is presented with prayers on a daily basis with all the churches. For they understand that they should be praying for their leaders and their authorities so that they can govern with wisdom and justice and goodness. And then number four, it talks about the kingdom of God. They should be extended and enlarged to God's, God's honor and God's um, glory. And this particular uh, Psalms is for Lift Up Jesus Ministries. Because this is where he's planting the seed of his dreams. And because the way that we have lived, and we have decided to accept the status quo, that it is what it is. God is shaking the tree. God is shaking the ground. And God's wind is blowing throughout the land. To know that he cares about you. He cares about your children and their children. And he's saying no more. He's saying no more. What he wants you to respond to him is that when your pastors and your leaders come to you, are you able to follow this vision that God is giving this house to be the agent of change? A transformative change. Would you say yes? I don't know what it takes. I don't know what kind of radical movement that I have to do. But if it's for God, if it's about His great people, I'm going to say yes. I don't know what it takes. But I will say yes. Yes, because of one great reason. And that is because you love God. Your love for God would be the engine in your heart to propel you forward and be a support with God desires to do in this nation. But this is not a short-term vision of God. This is something they, that the world will look at and they will feed off of models that were successful here. But in order for this to happen within the church the pastors the priests you must arise. And prophets whether you are ordained or you're not, you already know who you are. You must arise. And then the kings, you know who you are too. Sometimes it's obvious. You start rolling in with your Mercedes. Yeah, it's obvious. But guess what? If you're just feeding the wealth of what you've been able to create with your hands and limit God's influence over that resource within the four walls of your own house, you forgot about everything that God has ever spoken about his agenda is all about expanding the kingdom of God. So I want to challenge you today that what we speak about seven mountains of society is not so far it's not so difficult because God never intended to depend on one person. The reason for delay is that we haven't adopted it as a church 
And the information or the instruction hasn't come down to where we're standing. So I challenge all the pastors and leaders here. Your role, the 21st century, post pandemic, it's critical for people's success. Very, very critical for their success in this season. And I say seasons because it season does not end with one season. After spring, have summer. After summer, you'll have fall. And when winter comes, know that very little grows. And therefore, whatever you stored up, you're going to be fine. And I speak about these seasons in a very prophetic way. I'm speaking about your life. We work for the seasons of God to thrive in our lives. Once the season is over, Another year comes. Another season comes. And three more seasons come. And a new year comes. This prophetic year is for Kabale. Psalm 72 is for you. And you have to decide to take this to heart. And ask God, where do I fit in? And God is promising us. This book is not for the ancient. This book is for you and me. In 21st century, God is still raising up the dead. God is still performing signs and wonders and miracles. And he has done many of that already this week. But the moment that you leave this tent and this conference comes to an end and you leave your miracles back and you go back to your normal day-to-day -day life and you do not take the seed of faith with you. You're going to be praying the same prayer next year. And that is forbidden in God's mind. It is forbidden in the way that God works. God is not a broken recorder. God wants to respond to your prayer and fulfill the promises in a magnified way. And today, he's asking all the kings in Kabbalah to stand. All the kings in Kabbalah stand. All the kings in Kabbalah stand. All the priests in the house stand. All the priests in this tent stand. And all the prophets that felt so comfortable prophesying over other people's lives, you stand too. But God is speaking to you. Prophetic is not for you and another person only. The prophetic word is to make sure that what God has initiated in eternity is fulfilled here on earth. And so when some great things are unbound from heaven, it is bound here on earth. What is bound on earth is unbound in heaven. Today, God is unbinding Psalm 73. Two here ja, in Kabbalah. This is for your house. This, this is for your church people. This, this is for God's precious anointed chosen children of God. And when we say prophets arise, every cell in your being 
every cell in your spirit being has has so many many eyes to see that I'm here your humble obedient servant is here God and they are respond to you whether it's a word that's favorable or not I will be your vehicle and vessel and when you speak forth the word Psalm 72 whatever it says about economic prosperity because I have heard the, the business and government workshop people speak to me there is dissatisfaction there is unsatisfied frustration and if we are hearing this within the church guess what is happening beyond those yellow walls people are dying they have died literally. but right now if they don't catch the word of God the bread of life their spirit is about to choke and as you have risen up because you take this word seriously recognize that God is responding to you you are a prophet not only to the nations this time you are a prophet to the seven mountains of society you are a prophet to the business you are a prophet to the government you are a prophet to the education to the arts and to all the other mountains of the society and so the mentality of being an apostle within the four church first walls of the church has to break this moment because the apostleship or the prophetic office or even being a pastor it extends beyond the walls and that is where the true ministry starts happening and because of your prayer for a business the storehouses of heaven open what has been legally binding and what has been so frightening that it might be taken to jail everything breaks and God saves you and the only reason why God would do this is because you have identified what God has intended for this generation and when you stand up you're able to say I am an apostle to business and so God Send me the business people so I might facilitate all the great plans that you have I don't want this to you is a dream too small maybe one business is not enough a dream of a franchise dream of something bigger than you can afford in this very moment that is a desire of God remember Genesis God speaks to you his agenda is to multiply multiply the gifts multiply the business multiply the wealth multiply the greatness of God wherever he goes and wherever you go that is where God goes so never minimize yourself the moment that you enter into a room did you know even the dust in that room flips over you are anointed by the God most high your words they are powerful and you don't speak the words out of fear and you don't fear man you don't fear man who comes with a threat you don't fear man who comes with authority saying sir you have to come with us you come and you go with dignity and this dignity it's not defined by your life experience it's you're walking in with the dignity of God you step in you attract 
The heavens. You are the very person that God has been looking for all these years. The Bible says. That the eyes of the Lord is looking throughout the land. Who is that righteous person? Lift up your hands. I say to the Lord, here I am. God, I've been waiting for this moment. God, I've been waiting all my life. God, I knew my sin as a representation, as an ambassador of the kingdom of God. I knew my sin as a general of the heavenlies. And that God says to you this very moment, you have been and you are. And you will always be. You are the very person that God is anointing today. Fresh anointing from heaven. Kabale, you will never be the same. This is my first word from the office of the prophet. God is transforming Kabale. God is starting the work here through of Jesus' ministries. Take this word. If you're unsatisfied with what you see around you, if your heart of social justice breaks down, I said no more of this. This is nonsense. And that you know that you know that heart is not a heart of man. That's the heart of God. So God has equipped you and he's training you for this season. But the equipment and the training starts all over in the next season. And that's the beauty of the kingdom of God. You will never arrive. Because the higher you go, the greater the challenge. And by the way, your enemies have just changed. So what worked in the previous season, say goodbye to that. All the tools that worked in the previous season, you're putting that away because it's not working in the next season. You need to be under authority. You need to be under leadership that understands this. And when you grab onto the vision, of God, do you know that it's not just a personal blessing that you will experience? It's experience that will flow throughout the land in Kabbalah, throughout the land in Uganda. And just like how Queen Sheba came to Solomon, you will have other kings and queens come to you. How did you do it? How did you do this? You say it is my God. It is my God who strengthens me. It is my God who gives me instructions. And I want to just pray specifically for all the kings that identify as kings within the kingdom of God to come forward. I don't care how big your business is. I don't care if you're a street vendor. God really doesn't care. Remember the way that he sees you is in the spirit. And he sees you as spirit. So I'm going to call everyone who has a business and those who want a business who are called to the mountain of business come forward. Because in that, today's a day that God is breaking a lot of misunderstanding a lot of ignorance just like how we have never realized the people of the world are more wiser than people of the light. Today's the day. Come forward. In the name of Jesus. 
New things are happening I know that Lord God you are opening heavens to know the most unusual way the most incredible way that you are descending into the lives of these people and they have a dream from heaven I just going to ask everyone to please stop Hold up your hand high up. You're receiving from God. And though you are already walking on a vision right now, I want you for a moment just to forget about what you're doing. Because what God wants to make sure that if it is not from God, He's going to shut it down. I'm sorry. If you think that it's going really well right now, and you feel like, no, God, you need to do more. But God is saying this. If you don't start off on the right foot, you're going to go through a process where you go around restoration and just trying to correct the errors and you leave a big gap for the enemies to come in and keep on beating you down the Lord says to you start off on the right foot with the right foundation and so Lord God is giving you revelation this very moment oh open your eyes to see everybody close your eyes when you close your natural eyes that's the moment when your spiritual eyes open and so God we pray Father for your precious people in the kingdom of God the Lord that we're birthing new dreams in you God we're birthing new visions of God in, on this side of eternity and we are receiving from heaven Lord I see child care, I see kindergartens happening, I see that kind of education process, uh, that, that kind of business that's forming I see like textile companies forming in this place I see medical offices forming oh, I see senators I know we saw one political uh, officer yesterday come in but you will see many more and I pray for Apostle Frank right now in the name of Jesus that that be a center where God you will draw your elected officials God, they understand the greatness of the Lord, the manifest presence and the, and the purpose and destiny that you have for them, for them individually, but it's through spiritual authority. Thank you, Lord. God, you are sending more. You're giving him rest. Uh, revelation and understanding how to talk to them how to minister to them they don't just come off and say this is what the Lord has but he speaks the language and God I release an anointing of speech in this place God that we're able to speak the business language that we all should be speaking in order to tackle the businesses out in the secular world that we are children of God that deserve higher things that we deserve but here to manifest the greatness of God through our businesses in the name of Jesus I open access to capital right now and those of you who are, who are looking for a loan who are looking for capital to start your business I Pray in the name of Jesus that God will all of a sudden, all of a sudden open something. Send someone with the resources that you did not know, you did not see. But most importantly, that you recognize with the eyes and the spirit. You are that person that God has sent me. Can I talk to you? I want just to share a vision with you. Do not be intimidated by man to speak for the dream of God. A man is too small for God's dream to be afraid of and what you do is respond to it don't be a surprise in you say I I I, I wanted to share. Can you give me a moment? And so I pray for you. That God will increase courage in you to know that your vision means something for God. Your vision is a starting point. And whether it's a fruit, whether it's a vegetable store, a supermarket, a merchant, a technology, I see technology. I see a technology company that's forming. And those of you who are just barely starting, that you have interest in technology, grab it right now. Heaven is open. In the name of Jesus, when I see that there's some artists in this place, I see that you are weaving baskets, you are making beautiful things for the Word of God. I want to see those hands right now. God, I bless the work of these artists in the name of Jesus to send the business people to recognize their incredible quality of delivery that I declare in the 
name of Jesus. Ni God, Jesus. that you are raising up the king in them. God, you're raising up and you're giving them new identity. You're giving them new reasons why they need to continue despite the difficulties. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we praise you that today you're pouring out something unusually magnificent. We are so open. And we are so ready. God, run the next mile. In the name of Jesus. And all that you desire for the lifetime of these people, these precious people of God. I mean, you remind them that you have been and you are and you will always be walking with them. The Lord God is with you every step of the way. Every step of the way, the Lord is with you. He is for you. And the thing that you grab today, if I didn't say it, you grab it. Heaven is open. You grab it. The Father has given access to his children. It's, it's your responsibility to grab it. It's your responsibility to say, God, I don't feel like I'm worth it. Because you are worth every drop of my blood. And so know that the heaven died for you to have life. So the Lord bless you. And the Lord guides you through this process. And you will see the hand of the Lord that he is present in the work of your hands he is present most importantly you dedicate the seed of dream at the right place and that is the presence of God he's ready and if you're ready say with a loud resounding amen let's get loud hand praise the Lord Come on, let's hear